let's talk about the deceivingly simple Linton tube. Three tubes coming out of one tube. Very simple. Luckily, they've labeled them. This one called Gast Ball inflates the gastric balloon. This one suctions out the stomach. And the third one, creatively named esophagus, suctions out the esophagus. Brilliant. Pop quiz. How do you know this is a Linton tube? Ding, ding, ding. Just one balloon. It goes in the stomach. And here's the suction holes for the stomach and the suction holes for getting those Goombas out of the esophagus. Here's the unofficial DIY kit for the Linton tube. You also need a three-way stopcock, two dual lure lock caps, two Kelly clamps with fancy tape around the edges so you don't accidentally snip your tube, a 50cc syringe, water-based lubrication, a Christmas tree, a traction device, and we're gonna use Curlex and a one liter bag of saline. I'll show you an alternative method at the end and a Sharpie pen. And again, I take money from no one. Any marking pen will do. The three-way stopcock goes in the gastric balloon port, conveniently named Gas Ball, in case you forgot. Make sure there's a cap on the end, and then on the third port, you can hook up your 50cc syringe and have it ready with some air in the plunger. Now, we're going to check to make sure there's no leaks in the balloon. It's uh, ill-timed if you discover that when it's in the patient. So inflate some air, make sure no bubbles come out of it. And now fully deflate the balloon. It's a lot easier to insert it if the balloon is deflated. Then you wanna get some lubrication on the tube and the balloon, and you're gonna insert it just like an OG tube. You could also go through the nose, but we're gonna go through the mouth. Insert it all the way. And we want to make sure that this thing is in the stomach, not the esophagus. That is not good if you inflate it in the esophagus. So give it 50 cc's of air and get an x-ray. Make sure that that balloon is below the diaphragm. If not, do not pass go. Do not collect $200. Now, we can safely inflate the balloon completely. And the Linton tube takes 700 to 800 cc's of air. That's a lot of air. It's 14 more pushes from your syringe. That's 14 more pushes, count them out. Turn the stopcock to off. And now I'm gonna clamp it so it doesn't leak. I just wanna be double, triple sure. And I'm gonna replace the caps back on the three-way stopcock. One on this port. Remove the syringe and put another cap on that port. So now it should be locked and sealed and no air should be leaking out. Once it's sealed, you can remove the clamp and we're gonna clamp the gastric and esophageal suction ports. So one for the gastric port, and then grab your second Kelly clamp for the esophageal suction port. And voila, controlled chaos. Let's get sciency. The Linton tube has one balloon. It goes in the stomach. Now this should stop even esophageal varices from bleeding because the source of the bleeding is the portal venous system. So putting pressure at the cardia of the stomach at the GE junction should tamponade a variceal bleed. Now this is where your Curlex and liter bag of saline come into play. You're gonna tie a slip knot around your Linton tube. And if you don't know what a slip knot is, you should, you should probably just look that up. So secure that around the tube and then with the other end, I'm gonna just tie a square knot, passing it through the hole of that liter bag of saline. So just a fancy square knot there. Now you're gonna take it and hang it up over the IV pole. And this is gonna pull one kilogram of traction on your tube, which is the right amount. And there you go. Medicine or an art installation, you choose. Now use the marking pen to mark where the tube is at the lips because if it pulls out much further than this, repeat an X-ray and make sure you're not getting a hiatal hernia. Now we're gonna hook up wall suction to the gastric and esophageal suction ports. So remove the clamps, use a Christmas tree and suction tubing, and you can suction out all the Goombas. Now here's that alternative method I said I'd show you, and this is thanks to Scott Weingart on the MCRIT site. You need the Hollister ETAD tube attachment device. Take a second one of these attachment devices and railroad it onto the track of the first one. And then you can switch your endotracheal tube to the one that you just added and secure that in place. Now take the Linton tube and pull traction and secure it in place with the other attachment device. And there you go. No pulley system. 